Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. We finally made it. After 22 MCU films, as well as the Avengers films to go with it, we now come to a close for Avengers Saga, which is called Avengers Endgame. Yes. This time, after the event of Infinity War that came out last year, the surviving members of the Avengers and their allies decided to go travel back in time through a quantum realm to recover all the Infinity Stones and reverse the damage that's caused by Thanos. Yes. This is the biggest event that we all have been waiting for. And surprisingly, this is the first uh, Avengers movie to go up to three hours. So I know this was going to be a big issue here that's going to cause everyone to stay on their seats without having to rush into the bathroom until the final credits rolls. So. And keep this in mind though. There are no post credit scenes or even the mid credit scenes at the end of the film. But they are going to have um, all these other tributes uh, to where it all began. Yeah, movie after movie. Story after story. Character after character. <laughs> but we did it. We had to make it through. It's already becoming the biggest box office opening of all time. Out of its $356 million, it just made up to $2.194 billion. Wow. It's getting there. It's going completely strong. Now, there might be spoilers in this review. Just to prepare for yourself here. If you haven't seen the movie, don't watch the review and watch the movie for yourself before you get into it. Otherwise, if you have seen the movie, you don't have to worry about it. So there you go. So I'm going to start. Stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Don Cheeto, Paul Rudd, Brie Larson, Karen Gillian, Banal Guerrera, Benedict Wan, John Farreau, Bradley Cooper, Gwyneth Paltrow, Josh Brolin, as well as uh, all the others to join in, Benedict Cumberbatch, Chadwick Boseman, Tom Holland, Zoe Saldana, Evangeline Lilly, Elizabeth Olsen, Anthony Mackey, Sebastian Stan, Tom Hiddleston, Dave Bastista, Adida Wright, Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, Kobe Smulders, Linda Cardellini, Tom Bond Lawler, Ben Diesel, Chris Pratt, Samuel Jackson, Michael James Shaw, Terry Norody, Tessa Thompson, Rene Russo, John Slattery, Tilda Swinton, Haley Atwell, Versa Tomei, Taka Watititi, Angela Bassett, William Hurt, Winston Duke. Oh god, this is just going to keep going on and on and on with the cast. Frank Willow, Calvin Movi. Natalie Portman and James uh, Darcy. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But it, this is a big movie, so you gotta understand. It's based on The Avengers by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Yes, they do a lot of changes with the story, of course. Nothing wrong with that. Alright? 
So I, so everything can change in the movie compared to what the comics are, but it's still based on that. And I think Stan Lee did have a cameo in the movie, and it's the final one too. Um, it's written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, and it's directed by Anthony and Joe Russell. Yeah, Russell Brothers themselves. The movie began set three years during the Affinity War, which Fanos had used the Affinity Gauntlet, yes, it's the Golden Glove, with all the Affinity Stones around. Yes, he snaps it, and all of the Avengers and all the other people around had disintegrated and dissolved. Yeah, that includes Spider-Man, Nick Fury, and Hank Pine. Scarlet Witch, Visor, I mean Vision, and yeah, Black Panther, and all the rest. I mean, if, if you watched Infinity War at the end of the movie, you're definitely in for it. In for <laughs> Kleenex and, and tears. So, Tony Stark. Iron Man himself, along with Nebula, are actually inside a ship from a deep space, which that's where uh, Tony Stark suddenly sends a message straight from his helmet that's been damaged a bit, but still works, just to find out what's going to happen, whatever it takes, see if he'll be able to find the rest of the Avengers. And that's when Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel herself had rescued them and returned them back to Earth, which they reunite with the rest of the Avengers that are the surviving members. Bruce Banner, the Hulk, Steve Rogers, Captain America, Rocket Raccoon, Thor, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, and James Rhodes, War Machine. So they're about to use Nebula's knowledge to find a way to actually ambush Thanos, who's now living in an unguarded planet, which they plan to take the Affinity Stones and use them to reverse the disintegrations that happen, so they can bring all their friends back. Unfortunately, Thanos had revealed that he already used them and destroyed it to prevent further use. Which then, that's when Thor suddenly takes his ha hammer and just beheaded it, knocks uh, and kills Fondos completely. Which, that's going to be a problem. Because five years later, Scott Lane escapes from the Quantum Realm. And after having to stay in there for so long, which happened in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but during the, uh, the mid credit scene. At the Avengers compound, he, so he begins to uh, search to find out uh, what happened and why everyone disappeared. So it seemed like it's almost becoming an empty space in the city. So he went straight to the the memorial uh, ground, the memorial event to find out um, if everyone that's on the uh, all these statues with names around are there. So, he begins to find out if, um, if his daughter is alive, and surprisingly, he was, uh, she was, and she was all grown up. So now, uh, at the Avengers compound, he explained to Romanoff and Rogers that he has experienced only five hours while being trapped, theorizing through the quantum realm that could allow time travel. Yes, because they're going to use time travel to bring them back. But they had to go all the way straight inside so that way they'll be able to collect all the affinity stones that's being hidden somewhere between those events that, that occurred. So, so three of them had asked Stark to help them retrieve them just so they can reverse everything that happened through Fondo's actions in the present. 
But Stark refuses to help out after losing his daughter, uh, Morgan. And after talking with his wife, Pepper Potts, who was the former assistant, he begins to uh, figure it out that there might be a, a solution to solve this. Because he figured it out. So he decided that he'll join in right away. And with the help of with the help of the Hulk, who's now being strengthened all the way into the body, straight from to becoming more like just Bruce Banner and already as the Hulk, but he can speak and and just wears uh, some some nerdy or at this rate, <laughs> I don't know why I have to say it, but um, nerdy fit glasses so that way it can make him as smarter as ever. So now he's just basically Bruce Banner and Hulk put together. So. He successfully built a time machine, but he warns them that changing the past creates a branch alternative reality that happens already instead of affecting the current reality present. Because you know how it's going to happen all the way through. So Banner Rocker suddenly goes to New Asgard, so that way they could find um, four who's now an overweight drunk, yeah, starting to look almost like the dude, yeah, Jeff Lebowski, yeah, there's actually <laughs> a reference to that too, yeah, because Stark said it. Because, <laughs> you know, he, he's been this way ever since the failure of Fano's, you know, just to stop him. So he's so he's actually playing video games, you know, drinking beer with, with his friends. Meanwhile, Romanoff decided to go to Tokyo to, to find Clint Barton, who is, of course, uh, Hawkeye, who is now a ruthless vigilante, you know, following this, this disintegration of his family. So now we know what happened to uh, Clint after all this time. Banner, so then after all this time, Banner, so once they have it all settled around and with all these explanations and, and trying to, to find out where all the Infinity Stones are hidden, Banner, Lane, Rogers, and Stark travel back in time to New York City in 2012. Yeah, this is where the first Avengers appeared. And we're trying to um, go after Loki. For his brother, and has um, Loki's army that's attacking the entire city. So it leads to that. So Banner suddenly visits the Sanctum Sectorium to convince that the Asian one might give him the Time Stone, which that leads to bigger problems because this is where he meets. Because uh, this is where. Um, this is a big one. I mean, because this is where he meets the Asian one, which the Asian one actually refused to get to give him the, the time stone. So yeah, this was going to be a lot difficult as it seems. So Roger also tries to get the mind stone, which also leads to a bigger one because. Because then Loki suddenly escapes, takes the Tesseract with everyone around, and and Stark was disguised as a cop, and then all those other things went around. Yeah, even even uh, Roger suddenly sees himself, and he's fighting together just to get it. Then Stark and Lane allows uh, Loki. Loki did escape with the Space Stone, which is the Tesseract. With that aside, Rogers and Stark decided to travel to uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters in 1970, where Stark attains an earlier version of the Space Stone, the Tesseract, and he suddenly encounters a young Howard Stark. Yes, that's that was his father. 
Well, Roger seals uh, several of Pine's particles, and that's where we meet a younger Hank Pine. <laughs> so, meanwhile, Rocket and Four had to travel to Asgard just to extract the Reality Stone from Jane Foster, who happens to be. Uh, from Jane Foster and also retrieves Four's hammer to join in. Four even got to meet uh, his mom who later got killed as she saw in, in Four the Dark World. Nebula and Rose had to travel to Mor Morog in 2014, yeah, Gardens of the Galaxy as it starts, to steal the Power Stone before Peter Quill can. Yeah, which is Star Lord. Then Rhodes um, had returned to the present with the Power Stone, but Nebula had unable to return it when cybernetic implants his face with those of her past self. And that's when Fanos uh, joins in, and Fanos from the past, which would then get to see uh, Gamora. Yeah, I do say Gamora differently. Yes, Gamora, who was alive, who was actually killed in Infinity Stone, in Infinity War. Yeah, Fondos killed her. Yeah, that's the big one. So this is, of course, the Gamora from, from the past. So now that's when Fondos begins to know where they are through uh, Nebula by watching a video of where she just recorded all the conversations of the Avengers and everyone else. So now this is where Fondos is ready to go after him. Which that leads to the last part where both Borden and Romanov had to travel to Bonnemer. And I know I'm gonna I'm sorry I'm gonna spoil this part and I know this is this is the big one. And this one really got me almost in tears. They're trying to get the Soul Stone from Red Skull. Yes. Which is Captain America's nemesis. And it can only be acquired by sacrificing someone they love. And this is what happens. Romanoff, Black Widow herself, kill, was killed. I'm sorry I had to mention this. I know it's hard. So only Barton was the one who attained the Soul Stone. So now they got all the Affinity Stones all together to put it inside their gauntlet that's red. So that way Banner can try it out and see if it works. Which it took out all the energy that was going straight into it. And that's where he begins to try it out, and and then he just snaps to see if this will work. And what do you know? Well, it it actually did work, but it leads to the biggest one of them of them all, the epic battle when Thanos appears, along with um, the other Nebula. Yeah, because we do get to see themselves here. And um, as well as uh, Gamora, and this is where Fano suddenly brings in the entire army to join in. So this is where it leads to attack with the remaining uh, Avengers joining in. But look no further, because by the time this happens, all of a sudden, the rest of the Avengers had finally appeared all the way. Yes. Scarlet Witch, Spider-Man. Um, and all the rest of them had finally came and kicked and totally kicked uh, Fano's ass along with the rest of his army. So this was the biggest battle of them all. Yes. 
Black Panther joins in along with the rest. They're, they're just going around, you know, trying to get the the Affinity Gauntlet that they created that Funnels was about to steal. And, well... <laughs> So yes, even the Guardians of the Galaxy team joins in to fight, and everyone else. And yes, even Captain Marvel came, joins in, along with uh, Hope and the rest, just to, to fight. And wow, this is like the biggest battle of them all, all the way into... So yes, everyone around, yes, Wakanda, Asgard, the Avengers, Doctor Strange, everyone had, had came came in and they were ready to win the war. That's going to happen and they're going to finally disintegrate it to Thanos because he gets what he deserves. Which, this is what happens when after um, Captain Marvel was, uh, was ready to defeat him but no such luck because it turns out and yes there's a big one here Iron Man Tony Stark had put in the glove the Affinity Gauntlets and actually destroyed him so now the rest of, of Fano's army and him himself are now gone Finally. And they won. They absolutely won the entire battle of the Infinity War. But it leads to a sad but almost happy ending when we find out about Tony Stark who passed away after he ended the Affinity War when he puts on the glove. So they had a funeral with all the rest joining in. I think they they can also still remember Natasha Romanoff. No doubt about it. And then um, they continue to move on with their lives. Everyone else, even Ford joins in with the Guardians of the Galaxy team. To see what their new adventures are going to be like, and all the rest of, it. and also Steve Rogers, who, who actually was about to become a lot older once it travels a couple more years, uh, which is supposed to be his real time. So now he's become more elderly than ever, and he gives uh, his shield to Sam Wilson. Yeah. And now, while well, his actual self is now with uh, Peggy Carter in his entire real reality, so so now this movie had now came, so now it all came to an end, the final conclusion of the Avengers saga, as it joins by with the MCU films. But it's still going to continue to go on as it made. And uh, it was definitely worth three hours of the entire film. I didn't take a bathroom break when I sat in my seat when I went to see it with uh, my father, my sister, and. Um, Mary, yeah, which is my father's friend. So, even though we had popcorn, and we had a drink, because why not? We were hungry, we were thirsty. I had to stay in until after the end credits rolls, and I had to stay in until the credits rolls, and that was it. But I loved it. It was great to watch this after all this time, after a long wait from here. 
But it was definitely worth it. I mean, I love all the funny moments that this movie went for. Especially when they had to go for time travel. It started to remind me of Back to the Future there. And I know they have mentioned other movies and reference. Because they always deal with time travel anyway. Uh, I, I, I love the moment when, when they went back in time to the event in New York City in, in 2012. You know, with Loki and, and his army joining in. And they had the battle to save everyone. Because they won the war for that. And they caught uh, Loki. Uh, I, li I like the moment where they had to all t go straight along with the rest of the um, <laughs> the S.H.I.E.L.D. team to go into the elevator only leaving the Hulk behind and <laughs> he has to take the stairs. <laughs> that was just hilarious. Or, <laughs> as I mentioned already, um, C. Rogers only fights himself and that was going to be difficult until the, he gets the, the stone. And then, um, yeah, there are other moments too, you know, where they reunited and then they started to uh, find a way to stop Fano's and then, you know, they, they come up with some other jokes here and there. And of course, even when they had to wait five years later, with all these things happening around, you know, of course, they had to go all the way to New Asgard to find four and, you know, always becoming a drunk. You know, even when he was trying to explain how to how to actually stop him, but even with this condition he was going through. Yeah, and the fact that he's getting a beer belly. He's getting a lot of hair and, and, and a fuzzy beard, that sort of thing. It just happens. Um, a lot of... Um, but a lot of great moments, a lot of great action scenes all the way through. Takes some time and effort. Um, just great to see all the characters uh, back again, even though it was a difficult task that they had to try. It, it was almost like <laughs> it's taking me back in time to when I first saw all these films. <laughs> because I had to see them at different theaters all the way. Yeah. From, although, yes, there are a few uh, Marvel films I haven't reviewed yet, so maybe one of these days I might be able to. Some great direction from the Russell brothers. I mean, they really teamed up to do whatever they can. Um, yeah, I know you see Ant-Man, you see a lot of uh, characters joining in. I know, I keep repeating myself, but whatever. Um, such a big screenplay that they had to write. I mean, great writing, a lot of funny dialogue and all that. Some great music score by Alan Silvestri. You know, he's been known for doing a lot of great scores. Um, amazing cinematography by Trent Oppelock. Great editing by Jeffrey Ford and Matthew Schmidt. And everyone else involved here, I mean, they really had a great future ahead of them. And it's just sad that everything has to come to an end. And we're definitely going to miss them no matter what. But no doubt about it, there's going to be more MCU films joining in. You know, we're getting the new Spider-Man, Far From Home. There's going to be other uh, films I think they're going to plan on for... For the next decade, yeah, as this decade is going to come to a close, the 2010s. I I had a feeling we're going to get some more uh, Black Widow films, which I know this is amazing considering that well, she's gone. I think they're they're doing this, but I think it's going to do something exactly like, you know, <laughs> Agents of Shield when they got Agent Coulson. Back, but I think this is supposed to take place before the Avengers, so, so at least we got to see him alive. Because he died in the Avengers. It's too bad they couldn't bring back uh, Crick Silver. Yeah, I wish they brought him back. 
but I still prefer the one from the X Men universe. Uh, or any others, but so it was all shot back and but it was all shot back to back all the way. It was really big. Oh. Wow, this was really something. So anyway, I'm glad I saw the film, I'm happy, and what a great uh, story. So anyway, that's Avengers Endgame, and I give it, what else, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.